First, if you've seen any of this before, you probably only use this form for the two or three of you that have seen this before. And there's another form, it's called Euler's form, which is, in my opinion, way more useful. So in the standard form, this was, what letters do we use? X plus YI. So we just turned X and Y basically into R's and thetas very carefully. So that's all we did at the end of class yesterday. Euler's form is a little bit different. Euler's form looks like R E to the I theta. Same R, but E to the I theta. So this E to the I theta part is the direction. It is this part that I underlined. Euler's. 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 It's pronounced like it's O, maybe O I L E R S. That's how it's spelled. That's how it's spelled, yeah. O -I -L -E -R -S. No, that's, it's spelled the right way. E U L E R. E U. Yeah. I don't know what other letter that could be. Yeah. Euler's form. Oh, so it's pronounced like Euler, like somebody who's uh, working at Jiffy Lube or something, an Euler. <laughs> there was some football team that's Euler too. It's spelled the second way, I think. One who oils. All right, so this is Euler's form. Now, one thing to notice. Uh, let's look at, so we understand, hopefully understand that the radius is how far you are from the origin, also known as magnitude or modulus, or absolute value, however you like to think about that. So that measures sort of how big the number is. The second part, the part that I underline is a little more complicated, that is the direction that it goes. So that's the direction it's going. And we can, let's take the magnitude of, uh, in the standard form right now. So let's look at magnitude. I just want to look at the magnitude of the underlined part right here. Actually, we'll look at the magnitude of the whole thing. So we're going to get this magnitude. Now, we don't really know how to get magnitude of a number times something else. So what we do know is a plus b i magnitude square root a squared plus b squared. So that's what we know. You take the coefficient in front of uh, the real coefficient and the imaginary coefficient square and add them together square root. So we saw that before. And you guys feel free to hit the shades if you want. Especially you two. Alright, so that's what we know. So I'm going to distribute the r across, so we're going to write it back, r cos theta plus i r sine theta. So how do we get the magnitude? We're going to square the coefficients. So I am underlining the coefficients, the real coefficient and the imaginary coefficient. So I'm just going to square those two, add them together. We're exactly doing the process described above right there. So we get a big square root. Make sure you square all of r cos theta. Don't just square the r, don't just square the cosine theta part. Square the whole thing. Plus, don't bring the i down. It's the coefficient. And hopefully you remember some properties of squaring. When you multiply a b squared, this is AB times AB, community of property multiplication. It's AABB, which of course is A squared B squared. So you can distribute powers 
into products. Definitely doesn't work if it's a sum, though. So if it's a sum, you have to do foiling. Let me write that down. So that would not be a squared plus b squared. So don't distribute across uh, sums. So we get r squared. Now, cosine of theta squared, we write as cos squared theta, unfortunately, plus r squared sine squared theta. All right, we are. We just have a expression right here. This is a real number expression. We don't have a vector. Well, I shouldn't say that word yet. We don't have a uh, imaginary. There's no imaginary stuff here. This is just a real expression. So what can I do to the r squareds? So I'm factor them out. Now r squared, I can write this square root r squared times square root cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. So I broke the square root across this product right here. I split the square root. So square root of the first times square root of the second. And that's the exact same property that I just wrote up here, except instead of a square power, it's a half power. So ab to really to any power is a to the n, b to the n, even for one half powers. So that's a general rule that works no matter what, as long as you're multiplying. So I use that rule here. So square root r squared. You have to be a little careful. It's not r. If r is negative, it's going to be make it positive. So it's absolute value of r. What is cos squared plus sine squared? One. That's 1. doesn't matter what theta is, as long as theta is the same in both. You square them out them together, you get one. That's Pythagorean identity. So the magnitude of this number is basically r, or magnitude of r, absolute value of r. As long as r is positive, the magnitude will just be r. So if you can keep your r as positive, this is just r is the magnitude. Another thing we saw getting to that is this part right here, the direction part, is a unit vector. I shouldn't say that either. It has a magnitude 1. I'm jumping ahead into vectors, which happened, I think, in 11.8. Yes. So separately, that magnitude is 1. We saw that work out. Square them, add them together, you get 1. So we're going to look at Euler's form right now. So you should think, oh, what in the heck, e to some imaginary stuff? What does that mean? All it means, you're going to go one unit or one in the direction of theta on the complex plane. So it's a direction where that angle is theta, and that's one. And this is e to the i theta. So it just says on the imaginary plane, so you got the real axis, the imaginary real axis right there. It's measuring the angle uh, in the usual way from the positive real axis. So that is the best way to think about e to the i theta. If you really need a formula for it, you can use that standard form cos theta plus i sine theta. That's all it is. So first example, right? I think we did, did one of these already, but we'll do another one here. This one should work out a little bit more oh, with a much better angle. 
So right in polar form, so we need two things. We need to figure out what is r and what is theta. It works just like points. So r is pretty easy to get. It's that square root of those two squared added together. And then theta is a little bit more tricky. And I want you to graph first. So I'll measure square root 3 is between 1 and 2. So I just put it somewhere between 1 and 2. It's 1.73, I think. Close to 1.73. So graph this out. Figure out the radius and the angle theta. And this problem is exactly like it was just a regular point. It's just written a little bit differently. So I computed the radius the right way and the wrong way. So the right way is you take the coefficient in front of i. So what's the coefficient in front of i? It's sort of invisible, but it's a negative 1. I know I'm going to square it, so I don't really need to even use negative 1. I know I'm squaring it, so you may as well just write positive 1. It's going to be the same thing. So radius is square root 4, which is 2. And theta is a little bit tricky. If you graphed it and you have some pretty good, uh, pretty good geometrical sense of common uh, ratios of sides, you probably already guessed the angle. It had more x and less y. So it's going to be pi over, uh, negative pi over 6 because we went uh, backwards or downwards. You can also use the tangent inverse. If you know tangent inverse values, you'll get the same negative pi over 6. So any questions on angle or the radius? And again, this works just like we did with points. If we were going to polar coordinates for a point, this would be the exact same process. The only difference is the way you write the final product. So before, we wrote r comma theta in polar form. But now we're going to write it. There's two choices, two ways to write it now. So in complex numbers, you have two choices. Here is standard form, and here is Euler's form. So I'll write it in both forms. Either way, you're using the same r, same theta. Euler's form takes a little bit less ink to write, basically. So we got 2 cos negative pi over 6 plus i sine negative pi over 6. It looks a little nicer if I put them in parentheses. 
So that is standard form, Euler's form 2e to the i, negative pi over 6. Now, just to warn you, you're going to be tempted to rewrite these things, like probably something like this. Why don't we just bring the negative outside, put it in front of the i. That's absolutely correct. And maybe, why don't we go in here? I know cosine's even, so I'll show off my even odd skills. Cos pi over 6. Uh, sine is odd, so that negative I can bring through. So it's minus i sine pi over 6. So it is true that this last line in blue, both of these equal what's right above them in black. However, what's bad about what I wrote in blue, if I asked you to plot the blue points, you'd have to think about it for a minute. Because you can't immediately see your angle. So if I asked you to plot, the second line is, the second version is worse for plotting. You're going to have to say, oh, it's pi over 6, but then there's a negative. You could probably plot Euler's form OK, as long as you look for the negative, which would not be right next to the angle. Over here, if you try to plot this, I think that would be extra difficult. Because cosine uses negative pi over 6, yet it's not obvious. The only way you really see it is that there's a minus here. So you have to reconstruct it very carefully. So I recommend against simplifying when you go to polar form. So do not simplify angles in polar form. What you're actually going to do is complicate the, the way it's written. So it's not easy for me to see what angle we're using in blue. It's a little easier to see in, in the Euler's form, but it's certainly not easy to see over here in the standard form. So that would take me an extra 30 seconds to plot that point, and I probably would screw it up. You can choose. Some WebR questions will say standard form. Some WebR questions will say Euler form. Either way, they have the exact same information. When you're taking your quiz slash final exam, I won't be picky about what form you use. I can read either form. Just don't simplify. Make sure I can see the R and the theta very clearly.